think I have a thing for reviewing only the second game in a series. Okay. So why stop now? Let's check out Ape Escape 2 and none of the others. Okay, but for real though, I should at least give you some background on the series, I guess. So, if you know a bit about the Ape Escape series, you'd probably know that it was created to show off the new technology at the time that you might have heard of called having two analog sticks on a controller. What? Now, what I find interesting is that no other game has really quite used dual analog sticks in the same way ever since, despite Ape Escape being incredibly well received. Like 99.90 million percent of games just use the second analog stick for camera control, but Ape Escape used the right analog stick to do stuff like swing your sword in whatever direction you flick it to, or you can rotate it a few times to charge up your sprinting hula hoop, or you can drive a little car. Having this unique kind of control feels so different than just pressing a button. Like the most simple example I can think of is that when you use the gotcha capsule machine, you swing your sword to turn the crank and again to crack open the capsule. And this could have easily been relegated to a button press, but because you swing the analog stick like you really swing that sword, the action has so much more oomph. It really makes you think about what kind of game control innovations like this aren't ever really used because people expect games to control certain ways. Like, it's so rare that people even break the mold of standard controller conventions. The only other examples I can even think of that use the right analog stick for actions in similar ways would maybe be like the skate games, which use stick inputs for tricks, but that feels pretty different than Ape Escape. Oh, and I guess Smash Bros uses the C stick for smash attacks and aerials, and it's almost like in the same ballpark, but that doesn't really feel like Ape Escape either. Unless you're playing Villager vs Donkey Kong, I guess. Funnily enough though, the only Ape Escape I played back in the day was on PSP, and you might be scratching your head right now because the PSP has one analog stick. So for me, it wasn't exactly a warm welcome to the series, and therefore I said a cold goodbye to the Ape Escape series for years. Not that it was a horrible game on the PSP, but it definitely was a bit awkward, so I put that game away and went back to watching my best of Chris Farley on SNL on UMD. Okie dokie! But lately I've been trying to play some cool and unique PS2 platformers, so I booted up Ape Escape 2, expecting to be underwhelmed based on my PSP days. But let me tell you, I was whelmed. I was super whelmed. Ape Escape 2 is some top banana stuff. Ape Escape 2 has got such satisfying controls and is always throwing new mechanics at you to keep things fresh. But you know, I couldn't just play this delightful gameplay without an extremely gripping narrative to pull me in, of course. So right then, let's examine how Ape Escape 2 brilliantly weaves together an intricate web of cause and effect full of intrigue and mystery that elevates the medium of games as a vessel of storytelling. Just what? is the story of Ape Escape 2. So as you can probably imagine, apes have escaped. What you probably didn't imagine is that the reason they're going bananas is that the main character Jimmy meant to send a shipment of pants, but instead he sent out monkey mind control helmets, which totally get it, happens to the best of us. But yeah, the villainous super smart monkey known as Spectre is using these to then make the monkeys cause chaos. Okay, so obviously the plot is just a very thin excuse to allow this game to be as weird as possible, but it's a really fun time. Especially because the two main characters are voiced by god dang Ash and Misty from Pokemon, what are you talking about? You have to get all the monkey helmets back before the professor returns from his trip. What? Why me? So I guess they really should have called it Prime Ape Escape, if you ask me. But really, like I said, the story is pretty light, which you'd probably assume. It's just a fun romp with likable characters and a whole lot of funny monkeys. But in the end, you do fight a giant gorilla robot on the moon, so it's all worth it if you look at it that way. You know, when I look at dumb stuff like that moon gorilla, I just gotta think about how the visuals of this game are just so entertainingly stupid. You're always seeing the most absurd stuff around every corner in these colorful and lively environments. Now the overall aesthetic for Ape Escape 2 is a bit less iconic than the low poly aesthetic of Ape Escape 1, but in Ape Escape 2 the visuals definitely have their own flavor of B-tier charm that I grew to love. And you know what they say, B-tier stands for best tier. Unfortunately the music doesn't have quite as much of that charm though the OST is really just okay in this one. Although this wouldn't have been so much of a disappointment if I didn't have the awesome drum and bass and techno bangers from Ape Escape 1 to compare it to. 
But okay, yeah, even though the audio, visual, and story elements Tape Escape 2 aren't too earth-shatteringly good, they do the trick, and they're really just in service to giving you the weirdest scenarios possible to have a fun time catching these funny monkeys. I love how they all have unique names too, like you've got Pelvis, Krusty, can't forget about Krusty, and of course, everybody loves Raymond. Oh, and each time you catch a monkey, you get this ultra satisfying catching screen. You know, this game gets a lot of those little details like that so right. Like, even the screen when you're loading into a level is hype. Oh, and the tiny little hub world you get adds so much flavor to what could have just been menus, really. You've got a neat set of bonus stuff here to unlock too through the gacha machine, like concept art, music, and little videos, and even weird retellings of classic fairy tales but with the ape escape monkeys like mad libsed in, it's so weird. But it's a good little distraction for when you just want to kick back and see some neat stuff you unlocked. Speaking of getting distracted, you know I think I've talked about pretty much everything but the core gameplay here so why don't I just sum it up real quick. Well, the way I'd put it is that the gameplay of Ape Escape is like if you tried to get a star in Mario, but the star kept running away from you and making fun of you and it stole your hat. W wait a second. Now, okay, Ape Escape has more going on than that. Like, sometimes the monkeys have Uzis. So, you know, it's a timeless masterpiece. I love how dumb the monkey design gets. Even the most basic ones have some real personality to them, and then some of them have like UFOs, and then some of them ride around in robot bulls where you have to use a super speed hula hoop to get behind them and hit their green butts. To help you catch all these monkeys, the game gives you a bunch of gadgets throughout the course of the game. It's pretty fun to find which gadgets you want to use to catch the different monkeys, and it never gets old to knock a monkey down and then quick switch to the net to catch them. This game can be so snappy and satisfying in moments like that, and it only ever feels a little bit awkward when you're using some of the less fun gadgets like the slingshot or the banana ring. The game rarely ever forces you to use the ones that aren't that good though. Most of the time you'll be running around with your sword, your net, your helicopter that gives you a triple jump, and your hula hoop that makes you sprint like Sonic in a bumper car for a few seconds. Because you'll be darting around all over the place trying to chase down these monkeys, it makes sense that they designed the levels to be so wide open. But maybe in part because of that wide open design, the platforming is usually not too demanding because it's not really the focus. It's just kind of there to make traversal a bit more interesting, and yeah, it does get creative sometimes. But overall, it's a good thing that the platforming isn't emphasized because Ape Escape 2's jumping can feel a bit awkward and stiff sometimes. The way momentum works doesn't feel very intuitive, and the fact that your double jump somehow feels floaty and heavy at the same time isn't helping things either. And also for a lot of players, using the right triggers to jump just won't feel that intuitive. Anyways, all those critiques aren't that big a deal because the main satisfaction of Ape Escape 2 comes not from straight up platforming, but from pulling off cool catches and using your gadgets in creative ways. And then once you've blasted through a bunch of levels doing just that, you of course have to fight some boss monkeys. And no, I'm not talking about those kinds of pictures of cool boss monkeys smoking cigars that Menspiration pages post. I'm talking about stuff like this lanky Kong looking monkey who rides around on a motorized unicycle dropping bombs everywhere. But you know, while I love the weirdness of these bosses, the actual fights are just pretty tame in comparison. Like, mechanically they aren't the most interesting, because you're trying to fit these controls that work best in wide open spaces with highly mobile targets into little boss arenas that don't tend to use the gadgets in very interesting ways. But okay, even though these didn't blow my mind, they didn't frustrate me either. They're like usually just a solid bit of fun that doesn't drag on too long. Although the yellow boss monkey does haunt my nightmares. I guess I should mention that there's enemies that aren't monkeys or bosses too, and they are God's greatest gift to this planet of the apes. Like you've got these eggplant bees, which just rock my chair, and you got these pineapple birds, so dang cute, and then you got these candle owls that bake my biscuit. Nothing is off the table for how oddball these can get. Even the most normal enemy, which is basically Ape Escape's equivalent of a Goomba, is so amazing. This is ultra cute spiral head piglet whose design makes them kind of look like a cupcake, and I would die for them. But they're angry, so watch out. Right, so that's all the main game has to offer pretty much. Catching monkeys, fighting boss monkeys, and taking part in eggplant bee appreciation. But I know what y'all are really here for. Monkey soccer. 
Yeah, much like another monkey game, Ape Escape was known for always having a handful of unlockable minigames with each entry. Now, even though these monkey minigames weren't necessarily brimming with content, back in the day, these were the modes you put the most hours into, purely because of the endless multiplayer fun you can have. Looking at you, Monkey Target 2 from Super Monkey Ball 2. God, that minigame was so good. There's even this indie game called Benito Days that made that mode into a whole game, and it's really good and has an incredible city pop soundtrack, and okay, I'm done now. Back to the Ape Escape minigames, which here in Ape Escape 2 are Dance Monkey Dance, which is a pretty mediocre rhythm game, Monkey Climber, which is this weird rope swinging and climbing game that almost feels like you're playing Q-Op, and the star of the show, Monkey Soccer. This is like one of the best cartoony soccer games out there. Like, obviously Mario Strikers is way more fleshed out as a whole, but Monkey Soccer carves out its own little niche by just being so weird and fun. The mechanics actually have some depth to them too, and the CPUs are no slouch. You can easily get like a whole game's worth of time out of this one minigame alone. It's kind of super impressive. So yeah, the minigames are a nice treat, and they're really just the cherry on top of an already sweet main game. I had so much fun with this unique, arcadey feeling 3D platformer. I mean, the gameplay loop was so good they even put it into Metal Gear Solid 3. Unfortunately, being so good did not save Ape Escape from being caught in the net of a changing gaming landscape. Like, the series had a good run, with a bunch of solid mainline entries and like a dozen spin-offs that never left Japan. But yeah, unfortunately, this series has pretty much been dead since the 2010 PlayStation Move game. Yeah, innovating dual analog controls definitely worked out better than innovating dual PlayStation Move controls. For some reason around that time in 2009, Frederator made a bunch of Ape Escape cartoon shorts that looked like if Johnny Test had like 15% of its budget. What the? Where's my ice cream? My ice cream! Hope we can see a remaster or something for this series at least though, because the mainline Ape Escape games are all incredible. I mean, hey, it happened for Klonoa, so I don't see why another classic PlayStation platformer series couldn't get the same treatment. Alright, that's all my thoughts on Ape Escape 2. So definitely get out your net and give this one a swing because Ape Escape games deserve so much more love for how they innovated controls and carved out a gameplay niche that still hasn't really been filled ever since the series died. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more thrilling coverage of the second game of a series without covering the first. I think this could really be a new trend on YouTube. Okay, I'll stop razzing your berries. Hope you have a good one and thanks for watching.